is live. Hi everyone, how you doing? Uh, happy Friday! Um, everybody okay? What have you been up to? Um, what have we got to tell you today? So, um, looks like it's just been announced. Looks like we should be open, be able to open the shop again. Obviously, social distancing in place and things. Oh, hang on. Let's just turn off my notifications because you might have just heard the goat screaming, which is um, means says what's up in me. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, so it looks like um, things are going to be starting to move soon, which is good. Um, we won't be opening on Monday. Uh, we won't. We've got a crazy, crazy busy week next week with um, Hachanda and all sorts of the different bits going on. So we won't be opening the shop on Monday, but I'm going to talk to the girls later this afternoon. We're going to do a bit of a video call this evening and just decide exactly how it's all going to work. But hopefully we should start to be able to see you all again soon, which is nice. Um, not just me talking to my camera <laughs> be able to see you in person although obviously it'd still be you know two meters well might be one meter apart might not we never know so um who's coming online who's there so we got tina we've got nikki we got linda pinch hi we got helen sheila marion <gasps> lots and lots of you yes. fabulous fabulous cool lovely um guess what i did today i'm so excited so so excited Oh, I might have ordered a machine today and paid for it, and it's it's not coming till next week though. I want it now. <laughs> I bought it. I finally did it. Um, so yeah, so I got my new machine covered. I'm very excited. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully it's said beginning of next week. So yes, I trust me. Do it on a Friday, so I've got to wait all weekend now. <sighs> not happy. <laughs> I am happy. Very happy. So uh, so yeah. So uh, yeah, very very excited, Benny, about that, which is good um so what are we going to do today we're going to make um some chickens lots and lots of chickens um so these can be used for pin cushions they can be used for oh, i've got a real big thread there i'm just gonna chop it off um well, they can be used for pin cushions they could be used for pattern weights you can make smaller ones and make them for pattern weights or paper weights um or you can scale them up and make door stops okay i quite like him i'm quite pleased with him i quite like his little little beak <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I'm going to show you how to, we're going to make one of these smaller ones today, um, but you can make them smaller than this if you want them for pattern weights, if you're a dressmaker, or you could scale them right up. God, he's actually really quite heavy. <laughs> um, and make a door stop. Okay. And I'm also, we're going to do a little bit of a challenge post. I'm going to give, give this little one away as well. Okay. So we'll, uh, we'll give him away in a, in a bit of a challenge, but I'll, I'll, as we're, as we're uh, working, I'll come up with something. I know animal related. I'll put a challenge post up. Let's see any of your makes that are animal related. So it could be that you've appliqued something, you've um, you've made a soft toy, you've used animal fabric. Let's oh, and I'm wearing like a cheetah printy type thing today, so it's all all appropriate. Let's do an animal related post. Let's see your bits and pieces, what you've made, anything. You can be be as creative and vague as you like. Make it animal, <laughs> um, and then I'll um I'll give him away and I'll chuck some girls in as well okay so we'll do that it's a little free price draw so these are so so simple to make they're also quite addictive when you start making them because they you can start giving them little personalities and all sorts so we're going to make one of these today now um i i'm using some orphan blocks so these i think were given to me by the lovely Anne reese in a bag of scraps she brought into the shop um, and they're leftover half square triangles from a quilt that um, she'd made um, so I thought these would be perfect for this they don't have to be made with orphan blocks you can just cut fabric and it doesn't matter what size the squares are they just have to be the same size okay so you could make little tiny chickens you know using like a two and a half or three inch square or like I did with this one I think he was 12 inches square so what I did was I I just sewed some of these together like that and and I think it was a twelve. I think he came out as twelve inch squares. So you can literally make them any size at all, whatever squares. I think they'd be really cute if you you know when we make a block and we're not overly happy and it doesn't necessarily go into a quilt, but then you're stuck with that block. They'd be really cute with like a log cabin block or something on it, or you know something with a lot of pattern and things. You could as well. You could put like added wings and stuff onto them as well, I suppose, um, or do like a double tail. But I'll, we can play with that in a minute, okay? 
So we're going to do, like I said, just one of the little ones. Um, just want to get everything, all the bits ready. Who's there? What's every, how's everybody doing? Uh, where is it? Uh, Marilyn asked, where do we post on? Um, I'll pop onto Facebook. Um, I'll pop it on, on our page. I'll put a challenge post up later, okay? And it'll say challenge post, show me your animals or something like that. And then just put a comment underneath there, okay? Uh, Heather so, asked, where did you buy your machine from? Uh, Jane B. Sewing. Don't be so. And we've had brilliant service from them, uh, and their local local business and all that sort of thing. So yeah, I like to uh, like to keep it local if I can. Um, and um, yeah, yeah, all done. And they did me a really good price as well, which is fab. So yeah, all happy. I'm very excited. Very excited. So I've already squared this one down to five inches. Okay, so I'm going to make this this one. This was a far. No, this was four and a half. Sorry. So I'm going to cut them down to four and a half to make one the same size. So, um, I'm going to square him up like that. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that that 45 degree line is right down the seam. Again, it doesn't have to be made with half square triangles. It doesn't have to even be made with a block. You could just do, you know, one square of fabric. Okay, so I'm just going to square this one down. I really need a new blade. I need to go and pick one up from the shop. And four and a half inches this way. I meant to do that this morning and I forgot to pick one up. There we go. So four and a half inches that one. And I'm going to do the same with this one. I'm just going to square this one up to four and a half. I don't mind that they're not matching. That doesn't bother me in the slightest that, you know, he's going to be one colour one side and one the other. I'm just using up those bits that, you know, you've got lying around that you think, oh, what am I going to do with those? <laughs> so there we go. There we go. So I've now got two blocks that are four and a half inches. Okay. Like that. You also need, and again, I've written a pattern out for this um, with all the different sizes on it. So that'll be on the website this afternoon. I'll pop that on straight away. Um, and um, you'll be able to buy that if you want. Okay. And it's got all the different sizes and, and the written instructions. You also need a little piece of fabric for his top knot okay up here so i've got this little piece of orange fabric uh, and that is two and a half by one and a half okay and then you need a piece of fabric for his tail and that is a two and a half inch square and then i want a little tiny piece of fabric for his beak which is a one and a half inch square okay and that's it that's all you need for these so first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of prairie points because his tail and his beak is a prairie point okay so we're gonna we i don't know if we've done prairie points before but i think we have actually oh, i've got so much fluff where i was sewing last night on this table um so we're going to fold this over diagonally right sides together and press him like that and then you're going to fold him again like that oh Ooh, that's warm <laughs> There we go. Okay, so there's my little prairie point. So all of these are now now nice and enclosed, those edges, and I've got raw edges here, but that's fine because that's going to be sewn inside. So I'm going to do the same with the beak piece, okay? So just while I'm doing that, is anybody any comments, anybody there? When Wendy says hello. Hi, Wendy. Uh, Sandra says hello, both just joined you. Lovely. Um, been busy catching up with my blocks. Did you say you have any machine? <gasps> I do! I booked and paid for it this morning. I'm very excited. It's coming next week. It's coming next week, they said, beginning of next week. So so there we go. I've made a little tiny prairie point for his beak. All right. Now, you need to decide what's the top of your block. Okay, so I'm going to just start with this one. So for me, I'm going to have the white at the top. Okay, and the colour will be underneath. All right, so I'm doing this towards you guys. So this is the top and this is the bottom. First thing I want to do is grab a couple of pins. <laughs> the little beak prairie point. So on the right hand side, I'm going to pin him in about a quarter of an inch down. Okay, so about there. So can you see the beak is pointing in and the raw edges are all together. Okay, so I'm just going to pin him in there. Well, I would pin him in if I had a sharp pin. <laughs> There we go. Oh, come on. There we go. Like that. And then I'm going to want to put the top knot up here. So for the top knot, 
I'm going to use this little piece of fabric like that and I'm going to fold it in half, right, uh, wrong sides together. I'm going to iron that just nice and flat. Now you can do anything with this top knot. You don't have to do this little pleated effect. You could use a bit of feather if you've got some feathers lying around. You could use a little bit of fluffy wool or something. Um, you could just do a shaped piece here. I just quite liked this little pleated pink effect. I'm going to use my pinking shears to just cut down oh, like that, okay, just to give myself a little little pinked edge. And then I'm just going to put a couple of little pleats in it. So I'm just going to fold them over, fold it over again, and again like that. Oh, sorry, hopefully you can see that like that. And then we're going to, hang on, take it over to the mat. You need about 12 pairs of hands sometimes like that and press it press it really well get those uh pleats nice and crisp okay like that i'm going to pop his little top knot okay so this time you want those pinked edges inwards and the fold again about quarter of an inch away now i'm going to put it like that and can you see it's sort of slightly over the edges but i want to give that sort of crested look so you can kind of play with with how this is. I'm not going to pin that on just a second. So once you've got that placed down, you're then going to put your other square on top. Okay, so I'm going to line that up. So this is the bottom with the bottom. This is the top because it's to you. And now it's lined up. Oh, get in there. There we go, like that. I'm going to just make sure those pleats have stayed in place. And now I'm going to stick a pin in. There we go. Just make sure that's right. I'm going to whip that pin out of there so I don't sew over it by mistake and pin him back in. So I've sandwiched the beak and the little top knot in between like that. Okay. We're now going to start stitching. So I'm going to grab a Frickson pen a second, just so I can show you. We're going to sew around three sides. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go along this bit to here. I'm going to go down that side, but on the bottom, I'm only, I'm going to need to leave a gap for turning. So I'm going to sew to about here. Leave a gap for turning and sew to there. I'm not going to sew this side here. I'm not going to sew the left hand side. Make sure we're going to make sure we back stitch there and there so it doesn't come apart. All right. So over to the sewing machine. How's everyone doing while we do this? Okay. Everybody okay? Any comments or anything there? Any questions? What are you up to? Sally has have you got uh, sorry, have you put the half try? half rectangle pattern on the website <gasps> no i forgot i will do that this afternoon i'll put this one on i'll put that one on i'm so sorry you did some you did ask me and i completely forgot it's been crazy trying to get ready for chanda i will get that on this afternoon i promise when i put this one on it won't take me two minutes <laughs> just put, oh, good reminding thank you for reminding me because i had completely forgotten um i said i'd do it as well wouldn't i bad sarah um right so i'm going to stitch down and across and then along the bottom but leave that gap okay any other questions there? Uh, Christine says, can I watch today? Facebook won't open on my iPad. Oh, no. Oh, why? Oh, hang on a minute. Don't you misbehave, missus, just because I've told everybody I'm getting a new machine. Hang on, let me just swap my foot. Let me just put a normal foot on for a second because it's trying to eat the fabric. There we go. Um, and just move over. Let's try that instead. Let's get rid of those trailing ends. So I was trying to eat the fabric. I could feel it being sort of dragged. So let's try this. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to come along. I'm going to take that pin out, but just hold the top knot in place. You could use your little binding clips. There we go. So come along to the needle down and pivot. And then come along the beak. Like that. Anybody else there, just while I'm doing this bit? Tina said, I'm looking forward to trying one of these chickens for my new sewing room. Ah, yeah. I received my two packages today. Oh dear, my, has, my hubby's sore, but oh well. <laughs> Tell him you won the raffle, love. We, we can offer that surface, you know. We can uh, we can pop a little thing on there saying, congratulations, you won, won the raffle. You'll never know. <laughs> right, okay. So I'm just going to stop there. And I'm going to backstitch because I want to... Make sure that that gap doesn't unravel and break the thread. And then we're going to go up here and 
again a couple little stitches and then back stitch just to make sure it's nice and secure and then come off the end okay like that so stitch down there down there across left a gap and then across here okay so, are you singing along to Moana there love <laughs> I said to Drew pop the TV on because the sound is better when there's some background noise so we always just put the TV or the radio on really, really low in the background. Um, it helps with the sound. It's something to do with filming. I don't know. Um, so we put Moana on. I'm stitching along and I can hear him singing away to Moana. <laughs> right. First thing you want to do is just double check that you've caught everything. So oh, that's a lie. First thing you want to do is click that little corner there. OK, click that one there. And then just turn him through. And I just check that he's all he's in, which he is. I've got no no edges sticking out okay so he's in like that and then I can I clip that corner there as well like that get rid of those bits there we go oh, she's gonna have to have a name the new machine's gonna have to have a name isn't she right okay so now what we want to do is open this out this side that you didn't sew open this out and line up the, that bottom seam with the top seam like that okay and I just give it just a weenie press at this point um it doesn't you don't you can do it without pressing it but I just find it helps everything sit a little bit better and now you want to add the tail on okay so the tail is going to go point first basically up the chicken's bum at the moment <laughs> so we're going to pop it through into in like that and we're going to sandwich it between and I sort of center it over that that seam okay so like that like that so you can see I've got that tail sandwiched in between and the you've got the top and bottom seam together now I'm gonna pop a pin in there just to hold it all in and now we're gonna stitch right the way across there okay now this is incredibly quick as you can see my chicken is nearly finished and we've been sewing for what 10 minutes if that like 10 minutes so we're gonna Go right the way across this one here, like this. And just stitch down, make sure that tail doesn't pop out. There he is there. And back stitch. Okay. I was just thinking you could probably turn it into a whale. Do you think? Why could I turn him into a whale? Or oh, with a yeah, some sort of tail? Yeah. Hmm. I might have a play with that, that might be quite nice. <laughs> right, again, just clip those corners take that pin out and that the gap that you left in the bottom okay you're going to turn him all the way through so hang on let me come right the way over let's come right the way over it's easier over here okay so just while i'm turning him through anybody there any comments what you're saying uh linda head said sing up and are clever <laughs> and sandra said freedom's a good name oh freedom it's not freedom though. I'm I'm chained to my sewing machine. It should be more like slavery sometimes. <laughs> so there we go. Not that it's a not that it's a bother. There we go. So just going to be using the edge of my scissors. You could use it, you know, a pokey tool or chopstick or whatever you like to use. I very often use a crochet hook. And then get my fingers in there and poke out his top head like that. There we go. Poke him out like that. Okay. Now if you give this a really good brush like this with your hands all those little loose threads come off but he goes fluffy which is quite nice I quite like that effect so if I just trim off those long ones can you see he's kind of gone a little bit bit fluffy now you don't have to you could just if you haven't got pink and shears just snip into it and do the same thing or you could if you don't like that fluffy effect you could do it the other way so the pleats are sharper but I quite like that bit of fluffy nonsense on his head okay so you're not going to stuff him I mean, this is just so ridiculously quick and easy um, I'll just push out all those corners like that okay now my doorstop he's got a whole bag of rice in there I made a separate bag like we do with thread catches with the sandbags um, and he's got a whole bag of rice in there to give him the weight which is probably why he's so flipping heavy but you could use play sand, you could use lentils, you could use 
all sorts. Um, crushed walnut shells work well. Um, if you're going to use rice or lentils, you want to sterilise it first. Obviously, non-cooked rice, uncooked rice. So put the uncooked rice into a bowl and stick it in the microwave for about three to four minutes and it will just kill off any bits that are on it that, so it means that when it sits in your, your doorstop it doesn't go damp or go you know, like manky or anything in there okay so the other thing you can use which I bought ages and ages ago on the internet is these are recycled they're made from recycled plastic so recycled um, bottles and things um, and they're what are they called so they, it's, it's like plastic pellets I think it's called teddy bear weight weights or something like that and it's can you see all these tiny tiny little um pellets they are i will only you can buy them non-recycled but i will only buy recycled ones so i think it's a, you know, it's a good way of using it recycled plastic isn't it um so you can buy these i think i bought them on amazon or ebay for quite a big bag and that whole bag which is half a kilo i i've made hundreds of these i've done about three or four of the door stops and I've still got all this. This is probably enough to make about four chickens left in there. Okay, so we'll put those there. They do get everywhere though. Don't spill them like I did last night because they roll and they ping off everything. I'm just going to grab the toy stuff in. Okay. Any, anybody else there commenting? Who's there? Who's there, uh, guys? Lucinda says making small ones as weight patterns. Yeah. Pattern weights also. Yeah, I, I mean, you could go even smaller than that. So you, you could do like three inch squares instead of four and a half to start with and they'd make brilliant pattern weights. You could also, um, you can, oh, they're like, they're like big washers, like lead weights. I think they use them for like maybe plumbing or in curtains and stuff. You could use those round lead weights in the bottom as well to make them look, sit nice and flat. So I'm going to put a little bit of fluff in the top of his head. And that's just because I want to stitch through later. Okay, so I'm going to sort of stuff him out a weeny bit like that. Okay. A little bit more than that actually let's stick a bit more of that in right this isn't very interesting i'm just going to stuff a chicken in a moment um so who's there anybody having a chat while i'm doing uh, this linda head says a bit like sea salt grains yes those are yes yeah absolutely and then sandra asks, do you mix them with stuffing yes i'm, I'm gonna um, i'm gonna stuff the top of him and then put a layer of this in the bottom okay so i'm gonna stuff him a little bit just because I think then it's uh, it's a bit easier to give him some sort of a what's the word decoration. Okay, right. Let's pop a, maybe a weeny bit more in there. I mean, how much you stuff him in, what you stuff them with is entirely up to you. We tend to buy um, cheapy duvets or cheapy when our key is open, the really really cheap one pound fifty cushion innards, and just open them up and use that as the stuffing because it's so much cheaper than. Um, than actual toy stuff in it and it's all the same um fire regulation you know it's got the fire same fire safety thing on them right this is the bit where it makes a mess you watch me get this everywhere now okay you could use a funnel or a cone i suppose shake them in no at least it says fishing weights all right fishing for... weights yes that would be a really good idea yeah absolutely I don't think we can still fill the fishing weights. <laughs> I could. I could go and rummage through, couldn't I? I have to be nice to him now. He's just bought me a sewing machine. Damn it. I've got to be nice to him now, haven't I? Oh, damn it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, don't go everywhere. Nearly. Oh, nearly. <laughs> Give him a good shake. Get it all stuck in there. Yeah, I'll check those ones in as well. Seems I can't get them back in the packet. <laughs> there we go. So, but you can put as much. It depends on if you're going to use it as a pin cushion. It doesn't need much. You could just use stuff in. Um, you know, they'd make really cute, like beanbag toys as well, wouldn't they? Because I mean, this the big one I've used safety eyes on, but that one I've just embroidered the eyes. So actually, they'd make really cute beanbag toys for kids as well. And you could adapt them to make other animals as well, I suppose. Oh, what would you make? Come up with some ideas. How would we make different animals? How would you, what would you make? How what could we do? Um, you could put we could put ears on them, couldn't we? We could make like floppy ears, and a and a long thin tail, and make puppy dogs. You could um, a rabbit. 
Pardon? Like a rabbit. Could do a rabbit. Oh, a rabbit would be cute. Could put some like long floppy ears and a and like a pom pom on for his tail. Anyone got any ideas? What, what can we make? Ooh, I'm getting see, I'm getting them everywhere. I could probably do with a funnel. That would have been that would have worked, wouldn't it? I think Leslie's still got my funnel from when she makes all my um, thread catchers. Right, I think that's actually enough in that one. Don't need any more in that one. I'm just going to finish uh, off. Tina with... says you could, uh, yeah, you could put the plastic. Uh, I think it's supposed to say beads yeah. or rice, etc., into one of the. One second, it's the writing's white on your white top. Oh, um, right. Sorry, where was I? Uh, on, into one of the small bags. Like them used to use for weddings uh, favors, and then yes, the, absolutely, yes, I know what you mean. So those little small like um, organza bags, you could fill those with rice or um, uh, these beads or whatever, and then just shove that in. Absolutely, that's what I did with this big one. To be honest, I made a separate bag out of calico because just because I had some lying around, a, a big a bag, poured all the rice in, and then shoved it in and worked my way round. So. So there we go. But that is pretty much And done. David says a unicorn. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If we'd have made this longer, maybe plaited a piece or something. Ah, oh, see? I want to see... Yeah, I've got loads of ideas for him now. <laughs> what else? What else would you make? Oh, maybe that's what you should do. Make some other ones and let me know. Natalie says a fish. We could do a fish. We could put some fins on, couldn't we? Make this... If we made this a bigger... Rather than a... A prairie point. We could make that bigger. Yeah, absolutely. That's what so, I think about the whale. Yeah, I quite like the idea of a whale. Right. Okay. We're going to ladder stitch this closed, and then I'm going to show you how to do the French knot eyes. Now, for the eyes, you can use absolutely anything. You could use some little black beads. You could use some little black buttons. Or I'm going to show you how I would French knot them. So I'm just going to grab a needle, so we can slip stitch this one closed. I put just the tiniest bit of fluffing over the top of the beads so that they don't come out, as one came out, they don't come out when um, you're slip stitching. Because if you've just got beads there, they <laughs> you're trying to hold it together, it's an absolute nightmare. Um, where's my needle gone? I put a needle here earlier. There we go. Right, so piece of thread. I'll just thread up a needle. Right. Talk to me, ladies, while I'm threading a needle. This may take some time. Uh, she just said a, a mouse. Do a mouse. Ah, oh, yeah, you could you could do like a um, piece of ribbon or some like string, you know, like piping cord for the tail, couldn't you? You could put that in and do little little ears. Yeah, all sorts of things. Oh, yeah. like the idea of a little mouse. Um, right, I'm going to do this double just for strength. So I'm going to pop a knot in the bottom. Like that, and I'm going to come up the wrong way just there, like that. Tuck all that bit of thread in, and then we're going to ladder stitch. Okay, so I'm going to tuck that thread in, get in there, it doesn't want to get in. All right, just going to finger press a tiny weeny hem in there. Okay, right, I'm going to try and do this towards you, ladies. So I'm going to come up just there at the beginning of the gap. Okay, and then we're going to go across to the other side and take a little snippet. I think we've done this before, and I know Sarah's shown you this on the, the dash hounds. And then we're going to take a little snippet over there, like that. And as you do that, you want to go parallel across each time. Can you see I'm going right directly opposite, get back in there, bead. <laughs> okay. Take a little bit out of that one. And a little bit out of that one, all the way up. Okay, and then when I get about halfway, ooh, when I get about halfway up, if you pull it nice and tight now, I'll just go it this way a second so I can, because I'm right-handed. If you pull it like that, can you see the stitches disappear? It's really nice and neat there. Okay, so I'm just going to carry on doing, uh, just finish up this seam. Um, any other comments there, Drew, while I'm doing this? Maria says, sorry, I'm late. Really sad that I'm back in work full time next week. Oh. Fair enough, lovely. Yeah, lots of people are going to be going back properly now, aren't they, I suppose, if you're not shielding or or whatever. So, Oh, Maria, you missed my exciting news. Maria, I've got a new sewing machine. I finally did it. Well, I haven't got it yet. I've bought it. It hasn't arrived yet. So, 
There we go. Okay, right the way up to the top, like that. Stitch that all up nice and nice and tight. And give it a really good pull just to you will get a little bit of fluff from the stuffing but that comes out and then you can see you've closed that up nice and uh, nice and neatly and then I just tend to do a right into the seam a couple of just a little back stitch just to secure it like that Santa says what machine um, I had I'd gone with the 1800 um, I was going to go with uh, an 1100 but there's a human <laughs> and Davis I don't know if you're there you had basically the last one in Wales they haven't got any anywhere <laughs> brother um a lot of places are out of stock of their all their sewing machines at the moment because they haven't been making them because obviously the lockdown and everything there's been nobody in the factories so um i rang jmb and said i want to order an 1100 he said oh i've just just packing packaging that up for uh, a lady and i was like that's ann davis isn't it and he went yes how do you know that i said it's because we talked about it on the one o'clock a minute ago <laughs> um so um so I went, I was a bit naughty and spent a bit extra money and went with the 1800. So it's more machine than I will ever need. You know, it's, you know, it will last now as long as, uh, as long as it possibly can at the price. <laughs> so there we go. What we're going to do now is we're going to do some little French knots for eyes. Okay. So I'm just going to have a little look at him a second. Just while I just realised I didn't pick up the black cotton. Okay. So I want a biggish one and... Oh, where's my black cotton gone? Oh, why is it? You can never find there it is. <laughs> you never find the one thing. I only had it last night as well. I sat on the, I sat on the uh, chair doing the French knots. So, you want I you I'm just using some like thick wool type. I think it's like darning yarn, but you could use embroidery silks for this. Whatever you like. Okay. So, I'll thread this one up like that. And then I'm going to side where I want to place his eye. So he's going to have an eye about there, I think. Yeah, about there. Okay. And I'm going to do a tiny, tiny little back stitch. So I'm going to come. I'm going to go in quite deep, and come up on that little spot that I drew. Okay, like that. And do a little back, little back stitch just to secure it. Like that. Okay. And now I want to do a French knot. So I'm hoping you can see this from the angle I'm trying to do it at. Okay, so I want a really big French knot because I want a decent size eye. So I'm going to wrap the yarn five times, four, five, like that. And then I'm going to go back in just where I came out, like that. And I'm going to poke it all the way through. So you need a decent sized needle to the other side, like that, and pull. And can you see, there you go, I've got my French knot for his eye. It's also kind of brought it, it pulls it in, because you want to pull quite tightly, pulls it in and gives him a bit more character around his face. Okay, now I'm going to do the same this side, so I'm going to do a little back stitch first, just to keep the tension on that eye, like that, okay. And I can do a French knot this side now. So one, two, three, four, five and back through and come out ooh, come out down the side of that French knot that side and pull him down in there we go okay I then just kind of do I because it's only you know, take him just a little bit away like that and come up all the way over here just poke it out somewhere so you're heart burying that thread inside the chicken like that okay and if you pull it quite tight, sorry, I'm trying to do this to camera, pull it quite tight before you snip it off, the thread bounces back and sits in that filling. Okay, and there you've got your little chicken all done. Okay, you can decorate them however you want. You know, you could add more embroidery, you could give it, give, you know, maybe it's a girl, you could give her some long eyelashes, although my boys have better eyelashes than I do, so it could be a bloke with long eyelashes. Um, you could make extra prairie, prairie points. So like on the, if you're going to do a doorstop one, if you, I've done one big prairie point, but you could do maybe a slightly smaller one and a smaller one again. And so he's got like, you know, feather types there. You know, if you imagine, you know, I haven't got another small one anywhere. Okay. But, you know, if you imagine that was a, a little, 
like that you, know, you could do that smaller so he's got like a little layer of feathers you could you know just stitch that in so he's got like a jaunty tail you could put wings onto him you know whatever you like really i gave him a bit of a bow tie you know just gonna make him a bit fancy um so yeah that's little chicken pincushions okay how how you what, what size you do them it doesn't matter as long as the squares are the same size when you start okay um like this one obviously i made the beak a bit bigger and the top knot a bit bigger but all those sizings on there are on the on the pattern okay um really really quick and simple little make mega cute i i actually quite like them with the um the half square triangles because i think they they kind of look like wings anyway like or like mother hen when she you know when she's got like a cloak on or something <laughs> So, so that's him that's chicken pattern weights pin cushions bean bags door stops whatever you really can come up with and you could certainly adapt them you could certainly adapt them to make uh make different animals i think so how's that how, that's it how's everybody who's any comments there uh, she says they're very cute they really are heather really says like they are really lovely yeah congratulations on your new machine Yay! so excited <laughs> yeah, yeah it says they look great cool fabulous um i will like i said i'll put the pattern directly onto the website now and i'll half rectangle tri uh, triangle one as well sorry about that i completely forgot um i'll get that on as well um i don't think what we're we doing tomorrow we're doing um some foundation piecing tomorrow so um i'm going to show you a new pattern and stuff and we'll we'll get that um we'll do that tomorrow at one o'clock um sean will pop um we're gonna we'll have a new raffle starting as well we'll get that sorted over the weekend um what else have i got to tell you sean will put out um, imagine tomorrow what's happening next week so she'll um she'll do a little post about what we're doing next week and hopefully maybe monday or tuesday we will be able to tell you about when we're how we're going to reopen how we're going to sort of get the shop back to a tiny bit of normality I and mean, it's not going to be properly normal is it because we won't be able to have classes or you know do toasters or anything like that but how we can at least you guys can at least come in come and see us if you want to uh, we will continue the one o'clock so until we've got to a point where we can do classes again we will we will continue with the one o'clock so um i'd miss you all otherwise what would happen if i just suddenly stopped i'd be a bit bored probably <laughs> so um cool i will see you all tomorrow guys any comments there quickly before i go uh and david says fab session uh thank you no problem. So does Linda. Fabulous. Kate says thank you both. Lovely. No problems. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow then, guys. Um, yeah, have a nice day. Bye.